Hello and welcome to yet another edition of Cedric Nunn's Photo Talks, in which I talk about an image I have made, including its context, context and aspects of its making. And um, um, continuing, I am uh, to con continuing to uh, talk about images that are part of this mid-career retrospective uh, entitled Call and Response. Um, it's about 10 years uh, ago that it happened. It, 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 it you know, I produced this, uh, the exhibition and book. And um, um, it, it's, of course, the uh, mid-career, the first half, what I hope is the first half of my career. And um, I'm working through the images in, as, as you can see, working systematically through the images in this, in this uh, compilation. Um, and and uh, in the way that the book is laid out, the first um, dozen images or so look at um, family and are extracts from uh, a, a body of work that I entitled Blood Relatives, of which there is a documentary film uh, made. And I will attempt to, I'm having some technical di difficulties uploading this to YouTube. It's in segments and um, I'm just struggling to get it into one cohesive unit. Um, I will embed that um, in, in the description below once I'm able to um, uh, overcome those technical di difficulties. So the image we're discussing today, as you've seen in the insert, um, the image is uh, entitled My Grandmother Amy Malau Lo Chats with Neighbors and Friends in Her Yard, Ivuna KwaZulu Natal 1988. And um, the, um, just just a, a note I've spoken to this spoken about this in the past but again to say that uh, Madlao was the nickname colloquial name that Zulu women Zulu people called my grandmother and we affectionately you know called her that as well uh, but she was granny to us and um, so you're looking at a what seems like a very simple, almost mundane, prosaic image of three women sitting on the floor, having a good old chat, and it's late afternoon, and uh, they've both had, they've all had very busy days, but those scenes were fairly common. So there was a lot of conviviality of people coming together to share gossip, chatter, information, uh, sociability um, in, in this rural setting. And uh, these three women would have known each other for many years now. They would have known um, for, for many, many decades and uh, raised their families together, um, shared the, their life experiences in many, many ways. And um, and it's important that you know, in a way, that they are in my, they are visiting my grandmother, and they were regular visitors anyway. And so you're looking at, um, you know, you're looking at three very powerful women in within their communities um, who have welded that the, the, that community in quite a significant way. My grandmother was born in 1900, and so 1988 made her 88 years old at that point in time, and she lived to over 100 years, 103. And I, I'm guessing that those her friends and neighbors were in that ballpark figure as well, you know, similar age to, to her. And I, uh, as a young, as I've said in previous talks, um, as a young uh, activist. I was 31, I think, when I made that image. Um, was struck coming from, you know, being uh, living in the cities, Durban, Johannesburg, and being involved in the tumultuous changes that were taking place in South Africa at the time. At um, this life that, um, I mean, rural life was fairly 
I wasn't I wasn't any stranger. I was born and brought up in a rural setting. But um, to see a coloured woman, so-called coloured woman, uh, living amongst Zulu, they, she had no other coloured neighbours, living amongst Zulu people uh, so seamlessly, was striking to me. And uh, it was an example of what could have been had there not been the social engineering that had taken place. And so I was curious about that and uh, seeing it afresh and anew. Um, as one does with photography, um, trying to look at the ordinary uh, in an extraordinary way. And uh, so an, a very simple mundane moment becomes quite loaded in a way when one begins to see the, you know, those layers um, um, in the way that they were equalized, all seated on the floor in that way, um, in that soft evening light. And, um, um, yeah, what seemed like such a tranquil scene, uh, which it was, was also embedded in a world that was in turmoil at that point in time, as uh, even that region was engulfed in the civil war that we experienced in the 80s and 90s in this country. Um, where communities tore each other apart. And we have a, a story, um, a family legend of, um, you know, gunshots regularly rang out in that period uh, in the hills around, around where she lived. And uh, uh, there was um, the case of, um, after a gunfight, um, a man running into her house and hiding under her bed with her in the bed and um, some minutes later armed men entering and um, inquiring after him had she seen him was he there and she denied that she had seen him that he wasn't he was not there and so that night under cover of darkness he was able to leave um, such was the nature of um, uh, even the area that she lived in. And uh, my grandmother was um, born a Miss Nicholson and she married into the Lowe family. And the Lowe family, um, quite a big coloured family there, in that close, close to that region, Fraser, which is an, uh, probably as a crow fly, flies about 20 kilometres away. Um, the great great-grandfather of that family was a Dutchman who would come out in 1856 I think and settled in the Blythesdale region. I'm having a memory lapse of the name of the area that uh, uh, a Dutch name in particular where um, they settled. Um, he came, they came out in a, a party of Dutch settlers as there were many parties of Dutch, German, English, all sorts of people came out and they were part uh, one of those parties that settled really across the Tugela River from where I am now. Uh, but something we only found out about four or five years ago um, through a member of the family that had um, the ability, time and ability to do some genealogy research. So we have all the information now about where they were born in Amsterdam and the party that they came out in and... Um, so the, this great-great-grandfather, David Lowe, was killed in uh, uh, very close to where my grandmother lived uh, in the Zulu Civil War of uh, 1883 84. 1880, yeah, 1883-84, uh, in the Fabeni Flats where he um, had settled and um, he had a, a, a trading store he had set up a, uh, he was trading and by enraged Zulu warriors uh, who attacked and looted his store and killed him fortunately his son Pitt survived uh, that violence he was located in Kreza and um, and to this day there's a very big settlement of Lowe's who live in Kreza very integrated into the Zulu uh, communities in that region and um, so these places, there's a, 
Ivuna Nongoma. I was born in Nongoma. Mashabatini uh, uh, Ulundi were a very much part of the fabric of our uh, low family and um, and the Nicholsons as well and uh, part of the landscape of my upbringing and the creation of myself as a person. So these are the layers that you see embedded in this very simple moment of the making of family, the making of community, the making of society, the making of a nation uh, with all its complexity. So um, I think I will end uh, this sh short talk now and um, thank you for watching and for more information on myself and my work can be found on my website a link to which including my blog and email address can be found in the video description below if you like this talk remember to click the like button and press subscribe should you like to see more of my content until next time thank you for watching